you, you've brought up two really huge and interesting things to me, right? Like the first one, just this question of like the life of the priest's family and the life of a yeah. priest and how difficult it is. And I want to talk about that. But I also want to talk about like when you say men are under attack, do you mean spiritual attack? What do you mean? And describe it and, and tell me how you see it. Yeah, the attacks are in a lot of cases very subtle. And it's it definitely there's a spiritual attack happening. There's a spiritual deprivation, I feel, that men have because they don't realize what's really going on. And I think this happened, this really started in the sexual revolution in the 60s, where before men could be attacked, women were attacked. And I think there were things that happened in the sexual revolution. There were things that, and I've researched this now, I, I can actually see what the demonic strategy has been since the 60s. And you could argue it even started before that in the Industrial Revolution, where where things were becoming automated and men couldn't work with their hands as much anymore. Now we're in cubicle farms. I'm in corporate America, and that's the norm now, right? I mean, one of the things that I think confuses men is what are the roles? Because we hear so much about, you know, who's the... If the man is the head of the household, does that mean he's the boss, right? Because we have to know in our culture, who's the boss? Who reports to who? Like, that's not that's not the right question, right? We both have right. roles as male and female. And that was goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. So one thing that our spiritual advisor, Father Hans, has said over and over again, has taught us is that men create with their hands and women create with their bodies. And so when men create, it's to take the stuff of creation, to fashion it into something else. And when women create, now they bear children, of course, there's a material reality to that, but there's a spiritual reality to filling the world with life. They, the women do this in the church, which I think is an even more important role than the male role in the church. If we lose the woman's role in the church, the church loses its life, if you think about it. And so this attack on manhood is really an attack on understanding what it means to be a man. And all of the answers to what men are struggling with are in our anthropology, our orthodox anthropology. And that's what I think men are drawn to. They're drawn to the fact that they know that there's a structure to creation, that there's an order in creation. And it should be about order, not chaos, right? So that's what I think is drawing the men in. They see a hierarchical structure, they see patriarchy, but they don't see it as a toxic thing. They don't see that as something that is oppressive because we also hear so much about, you know, who is the oppressed and who is the oppressor these days. It's not about that at all, right? To be in synergy, we each participate in each other's role. So it's not who's above the other. We're constantly serving the other. So to understand husband and wife, I mean, that, that to me, I didn't have a proper understanding prior to really digging into this. And I think that attack on manhood is is very subtle, but it's starting to really confuse men as to what it really means to be in the male role. I think a lot of men think that they should become more like women, that a lot of the, the things that they're hearing in the culture are saying that, and that women should become more like men, which is yeah. adding to the confusion. Yeah. But male and female are, although equal, it doesn't mean they're identical, right? So right. we can be equal as male and female in the church but we don't have to do exactly the same thing. In fact, we're not supposed to, right? We, we, it's, it's wonderful how we all have so many gifts in the church because God wants us to rely on each other, to need each other, to be in communion, yeah. to be an icon of the Trinity, persons in community and not individuals. So this attack, I know this is the long answer to your question. It's, it's starting to, I think, make men question what it really means to be a man, to be a woman, mm -hmm. and what the man's role should be in as the father of their children, as the priest of their household, right? right? All of this is getting twisted now in our culture. And so that's the attack that I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, and I think it's interesting too, like you said, who's the boss? You know, who gets to be in charge is the question that we have in America, right? It's this constant, yeah. like, well, and it, and it is this model of this power and control and oppression and these different, these ways of seeing relationships, right? And, um, you know, the Orthodox model, Christ is the boss, obviously, right? like he's yeah. the king. And then we're all serving him and we're serving each other. And how do we best serve each other? And uh, it, it is, it is, I think you're correct when you say, that yet that this is very confusing for men. It's very difficult for men to try to work out like what is a healthy man 
look like. And I think in part of that is too, that we've had a lot of unhealthy ideas of what masculinity is in the U S Yes, we've had a lot of, and I think too, that, you know, I think that there's some confusion for women as well. I think mm -hmm. uh, happily motherhood kind of has this biological way of showing you who you are in a way, although not all women, of course, get the opportunity to be mothers or want to be mothers. But so I think in some ways that makes us slightly less confused, but but it is confusing, I think, for all of us, really. But uh, I do. And I wonder, too, you know, to what extent I think men get a lot of messages about sexuality. They get a lot of message. You know, our culture is just constantly want our culture wants us to consume things. Right. So like you're supposed yeah. to buy things. So as a man, your status is having a job that pays you a lot of money and you're supposed to go get a really nice car and you should have a super hot wife and perhaps also some women on the side. And, you know, there's like this, this energy of what our culture is holding up, right. As, as a, an ideal of masculinity, what does the church hold up as an ideal of masculinity? Cause I think it's not necessarily the same thing that like America has always held up. You know what I mean? Like, I think our culture kind of came in a little sideways in the first place and now it's gone way off the, off, yeah. the, off the tracks. Oh, I totally agree. And I think as men, we look to Christ. Christ is a man. And even saying that now these days is controversial, which it shouldn't be. Christ is a man. Right. And so you're, you're exactly right. I think that there's, there's a lot that we can learn from the saints. We can learn from Christ himself and, and keep our eye on the ball because the, what we're hearing in the culture is that in some places you're hearing that there's really no difference between male and female, that it's on the sliding scale. And, and that's very dangerous, right? So, so the Orthodox faith has a position on that and always has. It's in our theology of what it goes all the way back to Adam and Eve again and the roles that they were both given and our understanding of what that is. And, and it is very foreign in this culture to think of it in these terms. And like you said, when you're worried about who's the boss or who's, who's the one that's in control, it's really the wrong question, right? Because we should ideally be looking at the servant leadership model in everything, in our jobs, in our married life, in our church, right? So yeah, it's, 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 it's an uphill battle for sure. I think that, that I fell again for a lot of traps because I was, I was sucked into this mentality of individualism and materialism. And well, like you said, this, this idea of success, it all comes down to how we define success. If our success is just making more and more money, getting the bigger house, you know, getting uh, a beautiful wife, you know, it, that's not the goal that's in the gospel, right? So, so if it's so contrary to that, we need to start looking at what Christ says should be the goal. And then what happens when you do make that the goal and things aren't going to be easy, right? Christ actually said it's going to be difficult, right? So when yeah. those things happen, it shows you you're actually on the right track. And it's just, it's counterintuitive in a culture that's so consumerist, like you said, so focused on, you know, in a capitalist society, success is measured a lot of times by money, monetary yeah. success. And so yeah, I think that spiritual element, uh, I think Ancient Faith has been doing a great job. The, the Lord of Spirits podcast has been wildly popular for this reason, which I know skews very heavily male as, as far as the audience goes. And and I think that that's not a coincidence. I think men are are starting to realize this materialism thing is not working out for them and there has to be something more. So I think that's what's driving this phenomenon that we're seeing of men just flooding into the church. And I know because I've seen that even in our Antiochian men conference and retreat that happened a few weeks ago. It's a huge topic. And, uh, and you know, I, I see this continuing to grow. I see even more men coming in. I think the ones coming in now are those early adopters and the floodgates are going to be opening in just uh, maybe a couple of years from now. 